All right, for our older students or anybody, any age who wants to continue with the flowers, um, we'll do a little bit more detail. We have our columbine and we have it measuring across. It's a pretty large flower. So it measures um, about um, eight to 10 centimeters. So we can write that information. We can also label some of the parts. The center part is stamen. And that has the anthers on them. The anthers have the pollen. And then the stamen kind of cover up the pistil, which is in the center. So you can label that. Um, and then the brighter petal looking structures around the columbine are not actually petals, but the sepals. And um, so these are all sepals. And then these in the center that have the white and the blue are the petals. And attached to them are these, um, these spurs. Each one of these has a spur. So with this petal, this would be the spur, this would be the spur here, um, a spur for here. And this is what a petal looks like if you took it off of the flower, like we talked about yesterday. So the petal, this is the whole petal. This part would be called the blade. And this part is called the spur. And down here is where the nectar would be. Let's see. Okay, I did a quick little drawing um, in the last lesson about like a side view of a columbine and how um, the petals, if you saw the, these flowers on the side, this would be the um, blade of the petal and then this is the spur of the petal and then in between are the um, these sepals. So if you had this, um, the flower on its side, you would see it like this. And here's the stamen, and then the pistils that are kind of hidden by the stamen. But so the sepals, there's one, the sepals are right here, and then there's one blade that goes with each petal. So there's five blades because there's five petals. And this is how a petal looks like if you dissected the. Um, the flower. So um, uh, the pistil again is the what what holds the eggs. And there's different parts of the pistil, and the stigma is the top part that that um, where the pollen lands, and then it goes down into a tube. <clears throat> this would be the way you would see it if you dissected the flower to look at the pistil. Up here is the stigma, and I always think of it as sticky because the pollen sticks there, so stigma. And then in here are the, um, is the ovary um, with the eggs growing in it. Okay, so one more thing we could draw on the columbine flower plant is the um, the leaves, and you can see a picture of the leaves on your inside um, diagram of the columbine, which is uh, right, right down there. This, in this little picture in your guide of Colorado flowers, you can see the um, the blades of the um, the petals. Five of them hanging down, attached to one each, attached to a petal. So we can draw a, a leaf coming off of the the flower. Um, there would be a, a top part that is kind of the shape of the petals, um, with a little bit of uh, ragged edges, and then um, 
another part of the leaf would lobe off. So there would be several lobes off of the um, off of the stem, and then we can paint the the leaf um, with a green mixed with as we've often done an orange to tone it down and make it a more natural color. And then we have um, a leaf color that we can paint our columbine plant leaf with. It looks like these leaves are alternate, which means they, they don't, if there was another leaf here, it would come off the stem this way. And that is one way you identify plants is to look at how the leaves um, grow on the plant. I'm just adding more of a stem here. So then you could have another leaf going off this way. I'm just sketching one in really quick over here without drawing it. So I hope you can see some um, columbine in real life and it would be fun, I think, like I said in the previous video, to plant some. They're pretty hardy and then they come back year after year and they spread their seeds. So when flowers come back um, and don't die off the first year that they're blooming, they're called perennials. I'm gonna just paint um, this other one that I've drawn in. And these plants can grow um, to about 30 to 90 centimeters tall. And they are, um, they do well in sunlight. They like, like, especially dappled sunlight like you would see in the woods. Okay, so here's our columbine. Okay, so I'm gonna um, include one more flower in this lesson for you, and that is called a fire wheel. And it is common in um, prairies and deserts. And so we have, we have prairies out just east of us with sandy soil. There's lots of sand out there. I have a friend who lives on the, on the prairie out by Peyton. And um, so these flowers are called, like I said, fire wheels. And they... Um, and I thought it would be fun to include one more for um, those of you who are interested in continuing um, getting deeper into the lesson. And they are, their scientific name is Gallardia Pulchella or Kella, I'm not sure. And they're called a blanket flower. Like with many things, um, that are native, uh, there's a legend about these. So first of all, I measured out about um, an eight centimeter diameter going across and high, and I'm gonna just kind of sketch in a circle like I did for the columbine. And these flowers have the structure, they're a basic aster kind of flower where they have it's a composite. That means it's made up of many different flowers. In the center, there's disc florets, like we talked about a long time ago with sunflowers. And they are each individual little flowers. And so you can draw within a smaller circle, um, little tiny circles that are each an individual flower. And we'll paint those. They're and a yellowish on the center, and then um, they are like a, a dark red or a maroon color around around the edge of the um, the composite part of the 
flower. And then they have the ray florets, which are like um, kind of pointy, skinny ovals. So each one of these is a different kind of a flower too. And we can, like we did with the columbine, kind of um, draw little lines to indicate which direction they come to keep us on track of, of the way they grow on the plant. And they um, are petals kind of like a, a daisy. And we can draw those going out. And the legend of these um, flowers is that when an Indian chief went off to war, his wife started weaving a blanket of gold and reds as she was praying to the great spirit or appealing to the great spirit to keep him safe. The chief, um, the chief who went to war, his daughter, got lost one night and she asked the Great Spirit for help. And the Great Spirit sent a blanket of these flowers that the um, Indian chief's wife had been uh, weaving. And that kept her warm during the night. So that's kind of a basic legend. There's lots of native legends about natural, um, um, natural, um, things in nature about why they occur. So it's pretty interesting. Now I'm gonna paint the center of this yellow. And then while I'm waiting for that to dry, I will erase any guidelines that I have. And um, and um, then I will paint. I'm gonna paint the whole, all of the ray florets. These are all ray florets. Each of these is an individual little flower. They're really amazing um, structure. Instead of just trying to separate the orange and the red, I'm going to paint the whole thing yellow first, and then I'll let I'll paint the orange part and let it kind of blend in with the yellow, because there's not like a stark difference between the two. So I'm just taking my yellow and painting those. So these plants, um, the fire wheel, um, are easy to grow in um, pretty dry conditions because that's that's their native environment. So you could try planting some of these in your garden too. Um, bees really like them and we need to do all we can to encourage bees to visit and pollinate. Um, so like I said before, I think it's a perennial. A perennial means it comes back every year. So that's nice to have a flower that you don't have to replant. I mean, you could add more and they seed themselves too. So now I'm adding orange going around to the petals. And if, if your yellow is still dry, it I mean, isn't dry yet, it can, it's kind of neat because it can kind of just blend in. And um, um, so I'm just painting around. So within this, there's there's circles, like the little circle of yellow here. I'm gonna paint this part maroon, then there's a circle of the orange going around the flower, and then the circle of the outer petals or ray florets going around. So I hope you can find some of these either in a garden store or in the wild and you'll they mostly bloom in June and July and they're just um, really beautiful and bright and like I said the, their bright colors attract a lot of 
a lot of bees. Okay, so there's the um, the orange part of the flower. Now these are found in your guide as well. Here are the yellow flowers. Um, yellow and orange flowers, the fire wheel right here. They can grow to about two feet or 60 centimeters. Now I'm going to use some purple and orange or red to kind of make a maroon color to paint around the, um, the inside of the composite flowers and, and the, the flowers centered around the yellow. Okay, so these are really striking flowers, whether you see them in the wild or in your, your own garden. Again, they're the same kind of basic structure as the, um, the sunflowers that we did earlier that you'll see more in the fall. Um, So there's a couple of wildflowers that you that are part of um, what you'll see out in nature. Um, this is actually a Colorado State wildflower, and um, they grow. These ones grow to about um, about 60 centimeters tall. And they are about the same size as a columbine, about eight to 10 centimeters across. So we can label parts of this flower. It's quite different than the columbine that just has five petals and five sepals. This has each of these petals is a ray floret which is its own little flower. And then inside here are disc florets. <clears throat> so um, it's really interesting to see the variety that is out in nature of the structure of, of plants. We can do a little bit more detail with the very tip of your brush. You can take, um, take it and show some of the texture of the petals with just, just painting in a, little, a few little lines along here. So you can combine an orange and a yellow just to show a little bit of the texture. You can even pull out some of the color from the um, the orange on the inner side of the ray floret, and then you could do a little diagram, just kind of showing how it looks growing um, with the petals going off of the flower. And then it has leaves like this. And the leaves are alternate, which means they are exactly opposite of each other, but um, grow a little bit um, opposite on this, or um, alternating on the stem. And like I said, that's one way that, I think I said that about the columbine, it's one way that um, botanists will identify flowers or plants is how the um, the just doing a quick little sketch here how the um, 
leaves are attached on, on the stems, as if they're opposite or alternate. So there's, there's many different things that um, people who are trying to identify plants look at. So with this little sketch, we can say it's about, it can be about 60 centimeters tall. So I'll just erase that. I'll go in with a little bit of orange and put that in here. So sometimes you can get like a close up of your, what you're doing with your nature journal. And um, that's more of the maroon, so I'll put more of an orange in there. And then you can do like a little sketch, like kind of how it's growing. And remember that nature journaling is a combination of writing and sketching. And um, to keep asking your questions about, I notice, I wonder, and it reminds me of. Okay, so I can add a little bit more detail in here. As, as the first layer dries, you can go with a, a brush that doesn't have as much water on it and just, you know, uh, add more detail if you'd like. Okay, so um, this guy that you've been given in your force box is a great thing to take on your hikes this summer and uh, uh, try to take your sketchbook along and include what you see and observe in real life too. Um, it's really great when you can look at things firsthand, of course, but don't go ahead and picking these flowers because you want them to seed and make more flowers and for the people that come along to enjoy them too. All right. Well, um, it's been a great time uh, working with you and showing you different ways to portray um, flowers and animals and plants. And um, I hope you continue with your sketchbooking and um, that it's a lifelong um activity that you do to help you appreciate the world around you. You guys have a great summer. Okay, bye-bye.